Hello. Oh, hello. Are we working? Hi above the stag. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Is anyone around on Facebook? Let's see. How do I know if anyone's on Facebook? Hi, Shardy! Hooray! I feel like I'm now saying your name wrong because we've only corresponded by email. Huh? Read, play, work, repeat. I love the name of that. Hi, Adam. Aha! <laughs> Hi, Shardy. Yay! Okay, because we're working. Amazing. And it's one o'clock and the sun's shining and it's a really nice day. And I've managed to set up live streams when I've not done that before. I mean, I teach on Zoom almost every day of the week, <laughs> but I've never done a live stream. So this is fun, exciting. Apparently you're supposed to do this so that if people see you on the stream, they can like notice that there's movement going on and they can uh, join in. Well, anyway, I'm going to start and introduce myself. Um, I'm Leon Trayman. Um, if you're, hello down there, on, hi Alex, um, and uh, if you're on Instagram you're on my desk down here and if you're on Facebook you're on my Mac on the <laughs> screen here so I'm going to try and uh, work with both of you but um, we'll see. Um, hi, I'm Leon Trayman, um, I am mainly a voice coach at the moment um, during lockdown but uh, I trained as an actor. I trained at the Royal, hi Emily, uh, the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama um, before it was Royal um, as an actor. I did a three year acting degree. And then I returned about 10 years later to do the voice uh, studies postgrad um, with the lovely Emily Moore, who's just turned, who's just joined us on, um, on Instagram. And, um, I work as a voice coach uh, with actors and uh, support shows and I also work with broadcasters so I work with live radio broadcasters um, who at the moment work on shows that are around the world um, and yes Rock, of course I remember you hello um, and so there yeah, there are lots of um, facets to being a voice coach and I kind of work with um, with lots of voice coaches, um, other voice coaches like Emily and um, we, we work on accents with people, we work on voice into text um, and I'll go into a bit more about this in a minute. Um, so yeah, voice mainly, but I, because I trained as an actor I also work with people on acting and I train actors. Um, um, Adam, my Instagram is Leon the Voice Coach, and you can find me on Facebook, uh, Leon Trayman Voice Coaching. Trayman is T R A Y M A N, um, and I'm also on Twitter, Leon Trayman, and I'll give you all the details as well. And I'm sure there'll be a post about it as well. Um, my connection with the King's Head Theatre um, is mainly as a performer, actually. Um, I've done some new musical theatre over the years at the uh, at the King's Head and seen quite a lot of productions over the mm, probably maybe not going to say how how many years, um, but for quite a long time. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's I think I just I love the King's Head. It's a fabulous place, and it's always really interesting theatre. Um, my only gripe with the king's head uh, is that I'm a man of six foot two with quite long femurs, so the the bone of my uh, with the space between my hip and my knee is 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 not very good uh, in terms of being able to sit in those chairs. So I'm always on the end of an aisle because I've been to the king's head enough to know where I need to sit. Um, yeah. Um, so uh, one of the questions was, what am I passionate about? And um, that's a really uh, big question for me because there's lots of things that I'm passionate about. Um, 
acting I'm passionate about, really truly passionate about, voice I'm really truly passionate about as well. Um, it's telling stories, being um, being part of a sort of wider community, I think is really nice and really important as well. And especially during, during this kind of crazy time that we are in at the moment of this p pandemic and lockdown, such as it is or isn't, depending on you know your behaviors and your sensibilities um the sense of community is really nice um and that's something i think that we need to kind of um embrace i think um and often the performing arts industries feel quite competitive and they feel quite disparate like quite um separate because we're all kind of working on our own little thing together or not together but it's separately and then sometimes we work on things together but it's yeah, I feel like at the moment people are coming together. It's really nice. A lot of the online forums are really nice. People are helping each other out. Um, yeah, and I've been really busy. I've been doing loads and loads of coaching. Um, and a lot of my coaching is international as well. So I work with clients, gosh, as far as um, Melbourne and um, uh, chi various parts of China, Hong Kong, um Finland, Paris, Madrid, Barcelona, where else? Miami, uh, Vancouver, and um, and lots of people in London and uh, the British Isles generally, Northern Ireland, and the Republic of Ireland and Scotland. A um, couple of people in Wales, but not very often. Um, and yeah, so it's kind of working on lots of different aspects of voice and performance, because I do both because I personally do both I also do both as a coach um so I started as an actor and uh I continue to be an actor when the opportunities present themselves but I also um have to you know live and work so I teach and um coach um, and I see that there's quite a difference between teaching and coaching um, if you come to me privately for a one-to-one -one or either online or hopefully in the future in a studio somewhere, um, the coaching situation is different because it's more about addressing a problem um, directly head on for you, the problem that you come with, and then let's address that and make that better versus the teaching, which is kind of like sticking to a curriculum and making sure you get through something, um, maybe for an assessment or a I don't know, exam or something. So it's been a kind of it's been a real journey for me. Oh, journey! What a drama school word. But it's been been a real journey for me to go from um, kind of only really wanting to be an actor, um, and then moving through directing as well. And I still direct quite frequently, um, and working with actors on process and training actors, and then also looking at writing and producing and being a theatre maker for me variety is the spice of life and I think that's true for lots of people but I really like to I like to have a variety I don't want to teach the same thing all the time I don't want to coach the same thing all the time or work on the same project all the time I like the diversity um in experiences in people in thinking in explanation I, I really like it it's always really good fun um, to do something different. Um, so yeah, I've kind of had a bit of a meandering journey um, in terms of taking opportunities, which I think is a really important thing. Take opportunities where they present themselves and if you like it, keep doing it. And if you don't like it, then do something else. Um, find something else that you enjoy doing. Um, seek out other opportunities shoot your shot, ask the questions. Um, you know, my grandma <laughs> used to say all the time, like the worst thing they can say is no. So ask. And then if they say no, you're like, okay, well, at least I asked. Um, so you can have opportunity presented to you. And sometimes you need to go out there and, and, and really grab it. Um, and then kind of what does a day look like for me? So a day looks like, well, today, let's take today, for example. Um, this morning, um, I taught a two-hour class for actors. It's a little class that I teach on a Thursday that's like a, 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 session, a four sessions. And we look at 
today was all about awareness and observation. So how do you, what do you see in your body? How does it feel to, to make voice? Um, is it easy? Is it hard? Is it, I don't know, tight? Is it free? Is it loud? Is it soft? Whatever. Like what are the, what do you observe in your body? How do you do those things? Um, so that was this morning. I did a two hour class and then I spent an hour making sure that I could get online in the right way to do this. And now I'm doing this. And then I'm going to go and um, meet somebody for a socially distanced business meeting um, about a project that we're working on. So that's kind of the diversity that happens in my job. Um, yesterday, I uh, I taught two classes about um, exploring archetypes through voice and movement to a couple of groups that are based in Dallas, Pennsylvania. Not Dallas, Texas, but Dallas, Pennsylvania. So yesterday I was teaching um, across the ocean and teaching in America, but from this very chair. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a day in the life. And sometimes it varies even more than that. And I have to, I mean, my, if you, if you scroll back through my <laughs> deep dive on my Instagram or even my Facebook page, um, you'll see that my hashtag is, um, voice coach on a train because I am pretty much constantly on a train in my normal life when it's not locked down and COVID. Um, so I travel around the country, um, working with people on their voice and their performance. So voice coach on a train is usually me at about 6am with a coffee looking miserable and it's cold and I'm standing on a platform somewhere. Um, so yeah, voice coach on a train. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, a bit more specifically to do with like, well, how do, how do people work with, how do voice coaches work with actors and like, what's the point? Um, which was prompted by conversations that I have with people where they say, so what do you do for a living? And I say, well, I'm a voice and performance coach. And they kind of go, oh, right, yeah. And two things that they do is either they do what... Um, my very dear friend and colleague Andre Fudge and I refer to as the international sign of voice, which is, oh, voice. I don't know why this. I'm not even sure if that's a sign language for voice, but people do it all the time. They're like, oh yeah, voice. So you do voice. Sure, voice, whatever that means. Um, and the other thing that you always assume is that you, is that I teach singing or that voice coaches teach singing. As it so happens, I do teach singing. Um, uh, for those of you on Facebook, you can see that there's a piano right here. Um, and if I move Instagram people, there's a piano right there. Um, so this is not the same. This is not true for all voice coaches. Not everybody teaches singing. Um, not all voice teachers teach voice. Um, lots of voice teachers um, are kind of quite specific in their remit. So what they will do is they will teach accents. So there is a difference between voice and accents and singing. So singing, we kind of know what singing is, right? And we know that there are different styles and those styles range as broadly as, um, you know, jazz and um, to like hip hop to uh, like, you know, chart pop music, um, which is sort of a version of hip hop now, um, to musical theatre, belting, to, um, if we go further back in history, so like a classical sound or even an operatic sound. Um, but then, so then we kind of go, okay, yeah, singing, we get that. You're saying, you're singing words to a tune and it kind of makes sense, right? Yeah, sure. It's um, prescribed often by a composer and the lyrics are prescribed by a lyricist. Fine. Okay, tick, done, singing. Um, there are facets of singing that we are still discovering um, in research around the world about how singing works, how it kind of comes together and um, the different things that you can do in order to be able to get the best result as a singer and the best performance out of yourself or out of somebody else. So that's like the singing bit. But the vast majority of voice coaches um, who aren't singing coaches or singing teachers, they tend to teach something that's about speaking and communication and sometimes it's that the crossover is with acting 
So we, we have, uh, I have some colleagues who pretty much only teach and well, rather coach corporate people, um, who people who work in businesses that are not to the performing arts, and they are um, looking at presentation skills and public speaking um, and presenting skills, which is different to presentation skills. Um, and sometimes it's to do with clarity of speech and clarity of communication. So we might look at strategies for organising thought so that you can make sure that you can go from point A to point B to point C and be followed on that journey of um, thought, right? Um, it might be to do with the clarity of speech. So your thinking might be really nicely um, organised, but you don't articulate very well. So therefore, if you don't articulate very well, they're not really going to understand what you're saying anyway. So you've kind of lost half a battle there as well. So there's corporate stuff, right? Um, and some coaches just coach that. Some coaches only coach accents. Um, and they specialise in accents. And dialect is different to accent, um, at least in the UK. In the UK, we make a distinction between what is dialect and what is accent. So dialect is the language that you use to say something. For example, I would call something a sandwich, like a two stuff between two slices of bread. <laughs> like you need to understand what, like you don't know what sandwich is. Um, I would call it a sandwich. I might, if I'm having an off day or just feeling a bit lazy, call it a sarnie. Um, but... Um, some people might, uh, if you're in Australia, people call it a sanger. Um, if you're in various parts of other, the other parts of the UK that aren't London, um, you might get um, a butty or a bap. Or if you're from Hull, you might have a banjo. Um, very dear friend of mine calls it a bacon banjo. And I'm like, what's a banjo? Do you mean a bacon roll? And he's like, roll? No. And again, we get the difference between dialect, right? So it still means pretty much the same thing. It's just we have different terms for it. Whereas the accent would be saying the same thing, the same word, but with a different, uh, usually different vowel. Not always, but sometimes. Um, so you might have something like bath and bath. They're going to be different. Bath, Bath, West Country, Bath, RP in sort of most of London, Bath, anywhere that's sort of north of Leicester. So, or Leicester and north. So you're going to, so accent, people coach accents. So great, that's useful if you're an actor, right? Well, yeah, but it's also useful if you're just a person who maybe isn't speaking English as, um, their mother tongue, their first and only language. If you come to English as a second or third language, sometimes your the vocabulary that you have and the understanding of the language, the grammar, all that kind of stuff, is brilliant. But then people still don't quite understand you. So I also work with um, private clients who come to me for accent um, adjustment. Right, so people call it accent softening, accent adjustment, um, accent changing, accent softening, which is a bit of a strange one. Um, accent neutralization, mm, don't know what neutral is, but okay, fine, in terms of accent. So we work with people who are um, looking to be more easily understood. So I have a wonderful Russian client who um, is not an actor. She's an accountant. And um, when she first started with me, she said to me, every time I go to get tea, I ask for Earl Grey tea, but they give me green tea. And when she explained this, her accent was very, very strong. And she kept saying Earl Grey tea and all I could hear was green tea because of the way that she was stressing and breaking down the words. And then we worked for about half an hour looking at, well, like, if you say Earl Grey tea, it sounds like a green tea rather than Earl Grey tea or Earl Grey tea. And then you can really break it down. And it took 
a couple of days of practice for her to kind of get her mouth around it because it was such a new habit, to muscular habit to get into. And then what she did was she went to Starbucks and she bought herself a, an Earl Grey tea and she got her Earl Grey tea and she was like ecstatic. Um, so it's not, so accent voice coaches don't just work in the performing arts. We do actually work outside that, uh, outside the, 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 the realm of performing arts. Um, so there's accent work, there's presentation and those kind of things in business. Um, and then we work with actors. Um, not just on accent work, but also text. So if you're familiar with having trained at drama school or any of that kind of stuff, you might already know about text work. So, and text work doesn't just mean um, Shakespeare, doesn't just mean any particular kind of text. It's just kind of all text and maybe poetry, um, character development, all these kind of things. So we can really kind of get into the vocal facet, the vocal angle on doing these kinds of performances, these kinds of roles that require analysis of complex text or those kinds of things. So even though it's not exclusively voice, we also look at language and we look at language through the use of text. Um, Something that I've been doing a lot of during lockdown is working with pretty established people who are already kind of leaders in their field, but they are also looking for artistic development. And that's not because I'm the greatest artist in the world, far from it, and I still have much more growth and I look forward to the growth that I'm going to experience over the years in the future. But it's about kind of going, well, I'm here right now and I know there's stuff that I don't know. And I know that I want to be able to do more, but I'm not quite sure where to go next. And so sometimes it's just about strategizing, making a plan, um, or just being asked the question that nobody's asked before. Um, and sometimes that kind of magically happens when you um, when you're in a session and sometimes it's kind of accidental that that I'll say something and um, and the client that I'm working with will have this like light bulb moment and everything will kind of fall into place and they'll be like this is this is what I've been trying to work out for like five years or I had a client who I work with, or I have a client who I work with regularly, who I was speaking to on Zoom the other day, and she just, she was like, I've been trying, I've been trying, I've been asking this question for 15 years. And she works at, in, at the top of the kind of hierarchy of, um, as it happens, American radio. And she was like, how do I not know this? And I was like, I don't know how you don't know this. So just, but okay, cool. Like, that's fine. So we found a little missing piece. I think the idea of a missing piece is really interesting in coaching because it's like, what's the missing piece and how do we find that missing piece and just like slot it into the space or like how do we kind of just examine it to work out how it might fit into the space. And that's a really nice thing. Um, and that's really fulfilling um, because it also incites a big shift in a human being. It changes the perception of themselves. It changes the perception of the work that they're doing. It's it's really nice. It's a brilliant feeling. It's a brilliant um, moment of like change. It's exciting. Um, so we work with, so voice coaches can work with singing and music, connection to um, sensations in the body, which is what I was talking about this morning with my group. And all of those kind of things um, come together with with connection to text, to self, to and self as in mind and body, that then it becomes more expressive. You're able to express yourself more easily, whether that's as an actor in character or whether that's as a person in business or in you know any facet of life. So connection, accents, and often people say to me, yeah, but what accents do you do? 
And the truth of the matter is that pretty much all coaches who coach accents have at their disposal a database of um, accents, or at least we have a, a community where we can kind of just post something on Facebook and say, ah, I need this accent help. And someone will have sent it, will have done some work on it, whether they're a linguist or they're a voice coach, and they will send you stuff. Um, the Voice and Speech Trainers Association, VASTA. Um, sometimes we've I've seen posts happen on the Facebook groups for that, and it's like, boom, amazing. Somebody put something in about Mandarin about eight months ago, and somebody just went, yeah, I've done like four, five different types of Mandarin, here you go. And they just sent this Mandarin Chinese accent uh, breakdown. Just like, here you go, there you are, enjoy, have fun. Um, so again, coming back to the community, it's really brilliant. Um, so we've got text and music and singing, um, artistry, as I said, and then also voice production. How does your voice work? What's the anatomy and the physiology? How does it work? And um, some people are more explicit in their instruction and their understanding and their use of the, the sort of mechanics of voice. And other people kind of push it to one side and just go, nah, just concentrate on the feeling. Let's just go for how does it make you feel? How does that express? And that's there are just like slightly different ways of working and some people prefer one way to the other and there's no sort of better or worse or right more right or wrong way to do that um and then i guess the question finally is like well who do you choose if you're going to go and work with a voice coach and you want to work on your voice as an actor as a performer as um you know, lots of I get lots of dancers come to me because they're like, I'm a dancer. I don't think I can do voice. And I'm like, well, you can because you've got a body and you're talking to me now. But then so we have to work on certain things that dancers do that might interfere with their physical ability to make voice in a certain way. And so we just kind of we work it. And um, so sometimes it's, you know, so who do you choose? Arguably, somebody that you trust, somebody that you like somebody that you um, enjoy spending a bit of time with and um, that's one of the things. Um, Simon Jenner, hello. Um, I don't know who the current voice coaches are in drama school of credit. Working with the Globe at Social Production and see many recurring names, Cicely Berry and Greta Corson were legendary. Absolutely. God bless them. And um, fabulous Cicely Berry. I met Cicely a couple of times. Cicely Berry was the um, head of voice at the uh, Royal Shakespeare Company for, gosh since the beginning, um, until she passed away about two years ago, 18 months, two, maybe even three years ago now. Um, I've lost track of time due to pandemics and things. Um, yeah, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, if you, if you want text work, you want to know how to use text, especially Shakespeare, you want to use text and understand how to take text from the page, put it into your body and your brain and perform it, go to Sis Berry. Ugh, oh, amazing. And then people who've worked with Sis Berry then kind of, um, and had, had worked with Sis Berry and um, various other people, um, they they've kind of developed their own methodologies and their own ways of working, who include Patsy Ronenberg and um, Barbara Hausman and, um, uh, gosh, loads of people, too many people to name, in fact. But yeah, just wonderful. Yeah, wonderful people. Um, so I have to wrap up because otherwise we're going to um, overrun. And I'm quite well known for just overrunning by five minutes, but we won't do that today. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Leon the Voice Coach. On Facebook, I'm Leon Trayman Voice Coaching. Uh, Twitter, also at Leon Trayman. And my website's leontrayman.co.uk. Um, I do like free 15 minute uh, consultations where it's just about you. Like, what what's the deal? Like, what if you want to do some voice coaching, come and have a chat. Um, you can book it in. It's free. You just book it in for 15 minutes. Excuse me. It sends you a link and then we just have a chat about stuff. Um, and then the other thing is as well, here we go. Here's a little nifty thing. Um, if you put in KHT July 20, and I will send this to Shadi and she can um, post it for people. Um, and you put that in at checkout on my website. If you're booking coaching, it'll give you 25% off. So, um, that's KHT July 20, and it'll give you 25% off. 
Uh, you can also book the 15 minutes. You can message me and I'm very happy to get back to people. Um, also, if you like podcasts, I have a podcast with my fabulous, wonderful colleague, Andrea Fudge, who's also a voice teacher and a linguist. And that's Can You Hear Me at the Back, which is available on many podcast platforms. Um, thank you so much, those of you that have been here. Um, and those of you who have just popped in and left, um, and those of you that watch this again, do get in touch. Um, thank you very much to King's Head Theatre for hosting. And um, remember that KHT Online is every weekday at one live on Facebook and Instagram. And you can watch the you can watch these videos on the KHT blog and the YouTube channel and on IGTV. Um, it's been really nice to ramble at you for half an hour and I hope you've enjoyed and I look forward to hearing from some of you. Um, thanks a lot. And now I have to work out how to turn this thing off. My goodness, I always ruin the end. <laughs>